up everybody, Swillow here, and today we are doing our next Pirate Wars 4 character guide. Today we will be covering Cavendish. So Cavendish is a newcomer. There was a lot of hype for this character pre-release. I feel like that sort of fell off a bit after the game came out. Uh, maybe he didn't end up as strong as some people thought he would be, but he is still a really solid character and he has a lot of interesting options. Very fun to play as, so let's get right into this. First up, we have our R1 skills. Nobleman's Brilliance, Full Force Burst. Standard fair here, he's a speed type, so he's going to get reduced stamina usage on top of the increased attack speed and increased movement speed. Gets the job done, but Cavendish has an alternative. He's one of the few characters with a transformation. He has his Full Force Burst, Hakaba, which dramatically increases his capabilities across the board, and we will definitely go more into that when we actually get into the gameplay. Half and half. This is probably Cavendish's single, not not even probably, this is Cavendish's single strongest R1 attack. It hits a huge crowd, does tons of damage, tons of armor break, and of course you get the perks of it being a Musou style special where you're going to be invincible during it. So this is probably a move that you should always have on Cavendish. It's just so strong, it's crazy. Blue Bird, unleash a deadly thrust that causes massive damage. This is a pretty solid attack. It's not quite as strong as half and half, but if you really want to like stack a couple of Musou specials on him, they're both solid and really strong options. And as you can see here, you can use this in the air. So that's like a nice bonus. Even though I'm not going to lie, I highly recommend you using it on the ground because the hitbox is very specific and using it in the air, it can usually whiff I feel like or the enemy will just kind of fall it's it's very finicky to use in here Saint Exupery did I say that right Cinecross shaped shockwave flying forward so this is standard fair projectile with some interesting properties when used in the air on the ground he's just gonna draw a cross shape uh, and shoot it forward it actually goes pretty far so it works really good for like a narrow crowd control option the damage on it is not too bad either not like over the top but it's actually a solid move for how like the damage is pretty solid for how fast it is and when you use it in the air what's interesting is that it has some tracking properties so if you're hitting enemies and they sort of fall to the ground he will track and launch the projectile downwards instead of just shooting it straight like he does on the ground so that's pretty interesting it has a little bit of quality of life element in it to where it's going to track the target you're focusing and he'll aim it more towards the ground Precious Metal Axe. So this is like his strongest non-Muso special attack. However, the hitbox on it is super specific. This is a very difficult move to properly land. However, I know some really nice setups to use it, which I will go over once we get into the gameplay segment. Definitely a cool move. It's a really cool move, really strong move, very difficult to hit. Nobleman's Authority. Stun nearby enemies with an overwhelmingly beautiful face. So this is a pretty interesting and strong option. It has a long startup, which I think is its bi biggest weakness, as you can get knocked out of it pretty easy. But if you can pull this off, you're pretty much going to remove the armor off of enemies with armor, or you're just going to dizzy enemies that don't have armor. So this is really strong, really effective way to bypass armor and just immobilize enemies. However, like I said, the startup is very long, so you have to set it up strategically or you're going to get hit. Scent of a Rose. Restore life with the Scent of a Rose. Uh, healing moves are kind of whatever I feel. Um, you know, there's so much healing that enemies drop naturally that you often don't need an actual skill. However, for Cavendish, there can be some exceptions because of his Hakaba. So if you're focusing your play around Hakaba where he's going to have a different set of exclusive R1s once he transforms and you're not going to use much of normal Hakaba, Cavendish, you could actually afford to bring this and use this as an alternative to when the only kind of health pickups you can find are large ones. And I say that because maybe you're playing with Cheat Death, and with Cheat Death it's better to keep your health lower. So sometimes instead of picking up like a full life you could have this and just restore just a little bit of life to have as a like safety net instead of re restoring like all your life and losing the, your Cheat Death perk. So this is like the one exception that I feel like it would actually be really strong for Cavendish if you're not focusing on his normal form. Whirlwind. 
Hakuba swiftly slashes forward countless times. So this is a kind of interesting move. Like it's it's somewhat strong, but the startup is awkward. So when you use it on the ground, he's gonna fall to the ground before he actually does the move. And that startup is pretty lengthy. But if you use it in the air, he doesn't fully fall to the ground since he's in the air, of course, and he will trigger the move faster. So it'll have a shorter activation in the air. However, it becomes even more difficult to set it up in the air due to still having like a kind of small and finicky hitbox. So this is like a decent move, but you have to understand how to fit it into his gameplay effectively because in the air it can be difficult to hit, but it activates faster and on the ground it act takes longer to activate so you could miss. So let's see, what do I want to start with? We're gonna we're gonna have to do two runs here because I wanna do one run talking more about his normal form and then another run going over his uh Hakaba form. So let's get some moves. Let me take out full force burst and bring Nobleman's Authority. Yeah, whirlwind. Alright, I don't need to really show the Muso specials off because those are super straightforward. There's not like any special techniques to using those. Let me bring Pe Precious Metal Axe. So I can show off how to set up these particular options. Skill wise, we have Full Force Burst Enhancement. It's going to increase your damage in Full Force Burst. Resilience, increase the duration of Full Force Burst. This is a move that you could exchange. You know, Resilience is sort of a quality of life, but not really mandatory. Hero Strength and Cheat Death are going to give you your damage. Airborne Adept increases damage against airborne enemies. This is a very specific skill. You know, you may want it or you may not want it. Power Overwhelming, increase break gauge attack. Um, I don't think you really need this for him. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to like go straight damage. So I'm gonna opt for square attack enhancement and triangle attack enhancement. Hero strength, cheat death, full force burst enhancement and resilience. And I mean, you could obviously change this up however you see fit. But um, I think I wanna try this setup. I like this, I like the idea of this setup on him. All right, so let's get into this gameplay. Square. So Square String has pretty good forward momentum, uh, keeps him pretty safe, keeps him active, it's pretty fast as well. So it's it's a solid Square String to be honest. Like Square Strings in this game are, are really strong sometimes and he definitely has a good one. There's no real slow points or like stationary points in it which is like the sign of a really strong Square String. Triangle. So Triangle has like sort of a short startup and then he thrusts forward. But the coolest thing about this is that you can cancel into square attacks. So as you see there, I went straight into my square string after the triangle. And the cool thing about the triangle is that it actually does pretty decent damage and armor damage. So it's actually a great opener. Using it as an opener to any of your combat situations is really strong. So as you see how fast I was able to break his armor there, because I opened up with the triangle. Very good move. Square triangle. So square triangle is really interesting. It'll leave a tornado out, and it'll just, it actually stays activated for quite a while. So this is a really good opener. You can open with triangle, square triangle, and that's pretty much enough to break enemies' armor, like generic mobs' armor. Really good setup. So, definitely one of his better options. Definitely one of the better square triangles in this whole game, actually. Because I find the square triangle strings for most characters to be a little on the overwhelming side. Or underwhelming side. Um, square, square triangle. This move is not that good in my opinion. As you can see, he's gonna kind of draw short bursts, like some slashes that will burst over time. The main reason this is kind of weak is that it just doesn't deal as much damage as it looks like it does. Um, the hitbox is really, really small. Like, it's really only going to hit the enemies that you are completely on top. However, the knockback effect can hit other enemies. It can launch the enemies back into others. But, um, it's just kind of whatever. It's also a knockback move as well, which means that you have to make an extra effort to follow up after it. You know, it doesn't chain into any of his R1s fluidly at all. 
Like a lot of his R1s are very close range, so the follow-up potential is weak. It's just sort of like a quick knockback option if you really, really need one, but not particularly strong in any other fashion. Square, 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 triangle. So this is an interesting move that takes you into an airborne state, and you can go into your air attacks once you do it. I would say that I try to, basically I try to compare this move to his regular jump cancel launch attack. That's it. And it seems to do about the same amount of damage. Like it's not like notably stronger or weaker or anything like that. Maybe if you have skill modifiers, like I have the triangle attack enhanced modifier, that will increase it. But like I kind of test, I try to test a lot of stuff with um, no skills. And I find that it's not like exceptionally stronger than just using a regular jump cancel but uh it's definitely an alternative and the hitboxes is a little more generous since he moves forward during it as opposed to straight up like his standard jump cancel works so basically it's an alternative to get into the air um not much special about it otherwise square times four into triangle Alright, let me try to do this away from Ace. So basically, once I hit the enemies with this, I want you to watch what happens to the enemies. So as you can see there, he launched the enemies upward and they all fall perfectly around him. So this becomes one of his absolute best setup moves. You know, like it has okay damage, armor damage and such, but where it really shines is setting up into his R1s. You know, I talked about how some of his R1s have very finicky hitboxes. This is the move to set up with. This sets up into Precious Metal Axe, for instance, really, really well. Let me try to show that off right now. Let me see. Precious Metal Axe is on Triangle. So we do that into Precious Metal Axe. Perfect setup. Absolutely perfect setup. So it's a setup attack. You know, like the damage and stuff on it is nothing extraordinary, but the setup potential is amazing. Really good move. Square times five. So square times five is a bit of mobility and crowd control packed in one. You know, pretty solid move, honestly. I would say this is like a good go-to move when you're trying to fill up R1s. You're just trying to do damage and you don't want to be too stationary. So definitely like a solid all-around option. Square times six. Square times six into triangle. This is one of his best strings in my opinion. It's just fast, it hits hard, it hits a big space. Um, definitely just gets the job done. It's really hard hitting in terms of the speed type character. Very effective crowd control. Definitely like one of his just, I would say if I have to choose the best string that he has, that might be the one. Square times seven in a triangle. So square times seven into triangle. Uh, solid move, but not really anything special compared to some of the previous moves we've been going over. Like the setup potential on it isn't anything notable. The damage, the crowd control, all these elements on it are not that notable. Like it's really only good as like a strong strong finisher when you're focused on a single target but um i definitely like a lot of his other charge finishers in terms of their utility and potential overall compared to square time seven so next air combat triangle triangle is going to be your dive to get back to the ground uh it does what it does it gets you back to the ground quickly and effectively decent move for what it is however it's kind of unfortunate that it's his triangle so you can't chain into his descending or dive kick type attack like some other characters, but that's also effective as well because you can just dash cancel into it at any time. So, you know, it's it's got some pros and cons being just his default triangle being his dive kick attack. Um, square triangle near. So it looks similar to the ground version at first. However, it doesn't have a prolonged hitbox. Like it does not just stay on the field and continue to hit 
basically it's just one hitbox of the tornado coming out and kind of propelling the enemies up into the air, which can lead to some setup potential. Um, you can set up to, to move like heavy metal axe with it pretty effectively. So basically, even though it kind of gives the illusion of being the same as the ground version, it's not at all. It's more of a setup move rather than an actual like damage option. Okay, so next up, air square square triangle. So a downward thrust attack, it's like a decent damage option on jungle enemies and it can hit some enemies on the ground, though it's not like perfect in that regard. Um, I don't know, it's an okay move, like it's not really a move that I seek to go to in terms of his air options, but it, it works for what it does. Square times three in a triangle. So this is like a really solid knockback attack. Similar to Square Square Triangle, I I just don't use it like a lot, but it does have a little more utility because of the knockback. The knockback can actually hit pretty generously. So as you can see there, you can hit a lot of enemies, you can knock back into other enemies. Uh, the hitbox on it is a bit more sizable, it has some forward momentum as well. You know, like, it's not a terrible attack, but because it's a launch attack, and Cavendish doesn't have like great ways to follow up launch attacks, I don't feel like it's one of his best options to go to for. Square times 4 into triangle. So this is probably like his best knockback option. Like if you have to knock enemies back, this is one of his best ones. You know, it just fast hits hits hard, straight to the point. And it doesn't knock enemies back like so incredibly far that it's hard to follow up sometimes. You know, like, I don't know. Knockback attacks with Gavendish are kind of whatever to me. So. Pretty much I'm not like a big fan of a lot of his triangle finishers in the air. They just, I don't know, they, they feel like they don't really be, work very effectively with the character's R1 options. Next, um, well I don't have Hakuba right now so I can't go over that. So let me kind of show off the other R1s I have. I have, so as you can see there, hold on let me get the name of that. Whirlwind. So as you can see there, he falls to the ground and before he activates it, which is a pretty lengthy startup. And if you use it in the air, hold on, let me get it in the air. Okay, so if I use it in the air, you can see it starts up much quicker because he does not go into the falling animation. So it, you know, it gets the job done in terms of damage. However, like I was mentioning in the menu, there's a bit of setup involved with it because the startup for it is not instant or quick by any means. So let me kind of show off a little setup with it. Alright, we have it. So honestly, like, most in most cases, I don't really do anything special with it. I will do, like, jump cancel into square and then activate it like that's about it. like that's you could do like square triangle like i said square triangle is a good setup move it'll kind of launch them in a good space to use it um i don't get too fancy when i use this move in combos because it's very finicky so next let's show uh nobleman's authority stun nearby enemies with an overwhelmingly beautiful face so let's just kind of run. We got a couple of armored enemies here that I can show this off on. So as you can see there, it just broke their armor, stunned them, all the good stuff. Really effective. So let me fill it up and use it on an actual boss character now. Alright, so we got a full. We got Kuzan right here. Absolute perfect person to use it on. So there we go. Broke his armor. It's that simple. Um, the startup is lengthy. You know, it's very easy to get hit out of. Once enemies go into like their full force burst and they're moving quicker, it's so easy to get hit out of it. But if you can pull it off, it's super strong. And lastly, what's his last move on square? Saint Exupery. All right, so this is the projectile. So let me show it on the ground and then show it in the air. Let's get lined up here. So on the ground, 
So you can see how far that goes. Ama pretty amazing, actually. It goes a lot farther than I remember. But, um, yeah, it's, just, it's an amazing forward projectile. Hits huge crowds. And now I want to show it off in the air. So, we're in the air. So as you see, I just used it in the air after square square triangle, and he launched it at a sort of downward angle to actually like track the enemies. Let me try to do it again, but without doing it in a chain. Alright, so let's just do it right here. As you can see, he'll face down and he'll launch downwards to the like the closest facing enemies to him. So it doesn't shoot forward, it actually tracks enemies close to you. You know, that can be a good or a bad thing depending on how you, if you're trying to use it as a uh, true projectile. But yeah, that's pretty much it. We already went over Heavy Metal Axe and all that. So let's go look at Hakuba now. Let's go look at the real meat of this character. Now, it, Hakuba is... It's pretty interesting, I feel. Cause be, especially because um, of his dash. His dash actually functions a little more like a Pirate Warriors 3 dash. Which, if you know how Pirate Warriors 3 dash functions, it's basically like a, you know, a fully directional iframe dash. So I'm definitely going to show that off. Alright, let's get Hakuba. Let's get... Let's bring both of our moves to specials. Can even bring regular full force burst. Um, let's set concentration so that we can get Hakuba faster. If you're going to focus on Hakuba, you're probably going to want concentration to get your R1s faster. Um, I don't know. Skill-wise, I feel like he's pretty flexible skill-wise. It just really depends on what you want, what you feel like you need. Usually, I just try to go for damage. Alright, let's get right into this. Alright, let's fill up our R1. Okay, so we have Hakuba. Try to find a decently safe spot. So when you activate the Hakuba transformation, he will actually do an attack. This is really important to keep in mind because this attack is really good on her. So you can see how much armor damage and stuff it does. So look at that. That attack broke her armor. It broke her armor. It dealt like a good chunk of damage, like what, one sixth of her health, something. So that's, that's pretty good considering it's just the, the transformation phase, right? Breaking armor sets you up perfectly for after you transform to just like go on an onslaught. Amazing. So square string. Basically the same as uh, his normal form except just amplified, you know, faster, more forward momentum, more crowd control, more damage. It's just bigger, better, faster, stronger, basically. Square Triangle. Similar to his normal one, um, except he kind of moves forward a little bit before leaving the tornado out. Basically just the amplified faster version of his normal one. Square Square Triangle. Once again, same deal as his normal form. Uh, it's just a faster, stronger, powered up version. Still not like a great move, I feel. He still has better options, but it's definitely better. Square times three into triangle. So same as his regular form in that it's going to go airborne. It's a lot faster in startup. And Hakuba himself definitely has better... I feel like his air combat is just a little more functional compared to normal. So it just works out better overall. Cancel in comparison. Basically, this, his regular jump cancels the same as his normal form. It's just faster. All right. So let's build our R1 back up. Wait, let's show up our R1 specials. So this is half and half. Insanely strong. Look how strong that is. It's going to kill or heavily damage most enemies. What's the other one called? Blue Bird. Bluebird. 
Sounds like a forward thrust. Thrust. Uh, follow, solid damage. Effective. Gets the job done. Not as good as half and half, but still has the perks of a Muso special. Alright, we got our Hakuba back. Actually, let me go up here and change. Go up here and change on him. What's next? Square times four, that's what's next. Alright, so... Square times four. This is basically the same as his normal form, except it has a much wider hitbox. You can see he has like a few blades. Whoops. Let me try to show this off on a generic map. So basically the same as his normal form one. You know, it's going to set up into some strong options. Um, not much to it. It's just a better version of his his other one, so use it as you see fit. Square times five in a triangle. Now this is a bit different from his normal form. His normal form one had the zigzag back and forth line forward. Uh, still has a lot of the same benefits despite the animation change. Uh, solid move all around, good crowd control option. Square times six. So this is very different from his normal form. Instead of doing the, the thrust into the ground, you know, it's just like a forward, like flurry of slashes. But uh, it has a lot of the same benefits, being a strong crowd control option, has a big hitbox, good damage, good armor break. It gets the job done. Square times seven into triangle. Basically the same as this normal form. It doesn't even really feel amplified in any way either. Like it's faster because he's in Hakuba, I guess you could say. But um, it's kind of whatever I feel. Like it's a solid if you want to focus a single target, but he has uh, his other moves have better properties and setup potential, I feel. In the air, square triangle. So square triangle is kind of interesting. It looks like it does a lot, but it doesn't. It's basically the same as how it was in his normal form. It's going to set up into other moves. So use it as you see fit. You can set up into heavy metal. Actually, that was half and half, sorry. Um, you can set up into some of his R1s and stuff like that. Square, square triangle. Same as his normal form. Uh, you're going to thrust downwards. Basically use it the same. Nothing like, no like extraordinary new properties by being in Hakuba. Square times three. So pretty similar to his normal one, except the animation is a little more dynamic and intense. It's a forward moving knockback attack. I would say it feels just a lot more effective. The hitbox feels a lot more effective in Hakuba form because of the change the animation. But you're gonna use it for similar reasons. Next we have square times four and a triangle. Pretty much the same deal as his normal form. Um, not like any notable changes to it animation or property wise. It's just a stronger version of what he had in his normal form. And then the rest of his air square. And then triangle, triangle dive kick. Once again, same as his normal form. So a lot of his air combat pretty much functions entirely the same as his normal form, you know, just, you know, it has the benefits of being Hakuba. The square, the air square times three into triangle is the one move that actually got, like, a more, the most dynamic change I would feel. The hitbox is a little more generous, but outside of that, you're going to use his air combat the same. R1s. So R1X, that's Heavy Metal Axe. The Heavy Metal Axe in Hakuba is stronger but it has a smaller hitbox so let me try to show so if you want to set up to it with like let's say square 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 times four into triangle you need to delay a little bit and let the enemies fall if you use it too fast the, you'll you'll miss a lot of the hits before the enemies fall into it so let me try to show that off if i use it too fast whoops messed that up all right so square times four Yo, I'm messing everything up. It's kind of hard to see there because of like all the enemies, but um, pretty much that's, it's it's like a stronger it's stronger, but the hitbox is a little, little bit smaller than normal form heavy metal axe. Alright, let's get Hakuba back and chop the last couple moves. All 
Alright, so here we go. What do we have next? Arwen's Circle. So Arwen's Circle is half and half. And the cool thing about half and half in Hakaba form is it has no startup animation whatsoever. He doesn't fall to the ground or anything. Whether you use on the ground, the air, and strings, whatever, it just comes out extremely fast. So it's actually a really, really strong move that you're going to loop into a lot for really strong damage. Definitely a big improvement over his normal form. And then, of course, we have his Muso special. Which is half and half, except just way stronger. So think about that. Half and half is already like super strong in his normal form, and it just gets even better in Hakuba form. So definitely abuse it. He's got all of his R1 attacks, and Hakuba are really strong. Heavy Metal Hacks is a little finicky to land compared to normal form, which is already a finicky move, but uh, really strong. Like, that's basically it for Cavendish. He's a really cool character. Definitely, when playing Cavendish, you have to decide if you want to focus more on normal form or Hakaba form. Hakaba form is definitely his stronger form overall though. So if you want to play for power, pick Hakaba. And if you just like have an affinity or a like for his normal form, you can definitely use that too. So I hope this guide was helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you all for watching. Peace.